Hey guys, this is Dustin, and today I wanted to talk about how we can introduce a little bit of type safety into our Love2D games. So as our projects get bigger, we end up having a lot more objects to deal with, a lot more systems that require objects that work on different things in our program. And it's often really difficult to actually make sure that objects are going where they should go and that uh, it, it, it's really nice to have some guarantees that when we're you know programming a system that the things that get passed in are what we expect. Let's say uh, we have a table and we want to change one of the fields on that table. Well now we have to kind of do a text search throughout our program and make sure and really be diligent that that we're accessing the new field and not the old one. Uh, and so you know other programming languages they have a lot of utilities that make that easier. Uh, they'll catch a lot of that at compile time. Uh, unfortunately, Lua doesn't have that, so we have to work within the runtime um, and what tools that Lua gives us at runtime. Today, uh, in this video, I'm going to be uh, defining a, uh, a record type, a structure type, and kind of go over how we can add some type tags to these, uh, these tables and you know, assert on them to make sure that they're what we expect. All right, so the first thing I'm going to show off is how we can add a type tag to our tables. That way, if we have a table like T, we can do a assert T, uh, T is a player. We can check that the table is a player. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be attaching a variable to the meta table of our table that we can later uh, pull out and uh, use to check in our assertions. So let's create a function called set tag, and it's going to take in a uh, let's just call it a table, and then a tag. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to assert that the type of value that we get in this function is actually a table. It's really important to assert on your values that you get passed in. It just it allows you to catch errors a lot earlier. So if we have a table, let's extract out the meta table of the uh, of that table. And if you're not familiar with what a meta table is, it's it, it's a table that every or it's a it's a table that you can attach to another table to give it some meta information. You can also use it to create uh, two string overloads and you know operator overloading and all that. Um, so yeah, what we're what we're doing is we're saying let's get a uh, get the meta meta table. Uh, if there's no meta table, we'll just default to an empty table right here. And then on the meta table, we're going to do tag, see a little tag. Now I like to prefix it with two underscores to let us know that this is kind of a special field. It's not a field that you should tamper with or change. And then the next thing I'm going to do is just return uh, a uh, the meta table. I'm going to set the meta table on the table again. And uh, yeah. All right, so now let's create a function to extract out that type that tag. Again, let's assert that it is what we expect. And then all we have to do is uh, let's just do return get meta table table or uh, we can just say or this tag. And this could return null uh, nil if uh, if we don't have a tag on that table. All right, so let's test this out. Let's create a player like this, and let's set the tag of the player. So now it's a player. And then let's assert that player get tag player is equal to player. Now if we run, uh, what did I name this, types? We can see that we, 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 can see that we didn't get any uh, error. If we uh, change this here, you'll see that our assertion failed and we know that this uh, table isn't what we expect. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is create something called a record type. Um, that is just my name for it. Uh, what it is, is it's a table in Lua that won't allow you to add any new fields after you uh, initially define it. So if, if you, for, for example, change a field, if you uh, access the wrong one, if you access the old field, it'll throw an error at runtime. Um, this is really useful if you just want to have like a vector two type, right? You're only going to have x and y, and you don't want to accidentally add any values or fields to that. 
or or you want to catch you know typos if you accidentally type in Z instead of X. You want to you want to be able to signal that and find it really easily. So the, it, it's a very useful uh, useful thing to have. So I'm gonna have a, a new function called record. Record's gonna take in a table, and what we're gonna do is set a tag on it so that we can check if a table is a record. And after that, we're gonna do return set meta table on the table, and we'll have a meta table right here. Um, actually, what I before uh, I finish this out, I want to create a little utility function called ext, short for extension. And what this will do is take all the fields of B and apply it to A, basically a way to copy over fields in a uh, a shallow copy. So for uh, for uh, kv in pairs B, we're gonna say a k is equal to v. Um, and this allows us to just basically extend a table instead of, uh, and, or combine tables together. And the reason why I want to do that is because I want to preserve the, um, the meta table of our table here. So we can extend the meta table with a new meta table and add some more fields to it. So the field that I'm going to add is the index one. This is a special uh, meta table meta method that uh, whenever you uh, access the table, this field, this function gets called, and we can use it to check if the field exists. So we can do uh, self key, and then just checking my notes. I'm just going to do that because we don't need the value right here. And what we're going to use is something called raw get, which is a way to actually bypass this meta method. If you call raw get, it'll just directly call the original index meta method. So we can check if it is nil. Whoops. If it is, then we want to throw an error. Unexpected, or let's do record doesn't have field k. Um, key. Otherwise, we're just going to return raw get self key, like that. So let's test this out. If we have a vector 2, we'll say it's a record. We can do x is 100, y is equal to 200. And now if we do, uh, we could print vector 2.x. This should work. As we expect, we get 100. If we do y get 200. If we do z, which doesn't exist, we get a error, like that. Now if we try to set z, we don't actually see an error. And so uh, if, we, if we want to harden this even further, we can do uh, another meta method, new index. So this gets called when you have a new key added to a table. And I'm going to say uh, records are immutable, cannot add key, key. And now if we uh, try to print vector, uh, let's just run this. We'll see that we get an error. And let's make sure that we can still set x. So you can see that you can still set x. Nice. So um, one thing also I like to do is on these meta uh, methods. Um, I like to import a. Uh, I, I wrote a really simple, pretty printing function that takes in, um, you know, takes in a value and then just makes it look a lot nicer. Otherwise, if you just print a table, like in Lua, uh, let's say, if you just print a table, it return, it just shows you the address of the table. It's not very useful. Um, so this is actually some, uh, just a really simple function. I'm not going to go through all of it. Uh, I will link it in a git uh, gist below if you'd like to copy it. Um, but yeah, it's just a simple pretty printing function. Um, so to make our records just a little bit nicer to use, we can do to string function self. And we'll just return, let me import the library. Return pretty self. So now we can actually just print vector two.
and we can see a nice table representation there. All right, so before we move on to structure types, um, I wanted to create a little bit of a nice utility that um, just makes these record types a little bit uh, nicer to work with. So let's say, uh, let's create a function called extract meta methods, like this. And it's gonna take in a table. And what we're gonna do is create a table and return that table. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna scan through the table's uh, key value pairs and it's gonna find all the meta methods and put it in a list. So we're gonna do for uh, k v in pairs table do uh, if uh, type k is equal to string and k sub uh, one two is equal to so we're just checking that the first two characters of the key are uh, underscores and then also I want to uh, check that the type of v is a function. Then we're gonna table insert. Um, I don't want to do this. Or we'll we'll do methods k is equal to v. Okay. So what we can do here is uh, do meta methods extract meta methods table, and let's also extend it again. So we're gonna do it another time with uh, meta methods. So what this allows us to do is, let's say, uh, let's just make sure that everything's working here. Let's say that we wanna create a custom print. We don't wanna use the, the print that um, is built into the record here. Uh, we can just do to string like this. And I think actually what I wanna do is say table k is equal to nil. Let's erase that key from the table. So I can say to string self return string format uh, percent d percent d is that right self dot x self dot y and now we can override our uh, our methods and if we want to um, let me make sure. No, okay. So, so yeah, that, that way we can override um, our methods. We can add like a, you know, an add function, like this, if you want. Um, you know, etc. Et Just makes it a little bit nicer instead of having to go through the meta table to add these uh, meta methods. Okay, so now on to structs. So uh, again, this is just what I'm calling it. Uh, but what these are, uh, so records are anonymous. They don't have any name to them. Structs would be something that you would use for like your player type, um, for just various uh, objects that have a name that you want to be able to assert on. So they're very similar to records. Um, so I'm just going to call it uh, struct. And the first argument I'm going to take is a name. And instead of taking a second argument, I'm going to return a function that takes in a table like this. And up here uh, or down here, I can say set type or tag table to the name. And um, I'm just going to basically copy all of this. Maybe maybe I could actually just, I'm just going to copy all of this. Uh, you can clean this up on your own time. Um, it's pretty straightforward to do, but yeah, I'm just going to lay it out really simply here. And that's pretty much it. So now if we want a player, we can say, and l l let's make a constructor. So it's going to be a function called create player. Um, Let's say you give it a position, and we're going to return a struct player. And because of the really nice syntax of Lua, it allows us to write this in a kind of a nice, um, create a player right here, kind of a nice way. So you can see, uh, because Lua, uh, if you pass in a um, if a function only takes in a single argument and that argument is a string, you can omit the parentheses. And because this uh, function, this struct, is returning another function, um, in the same way as you can do that with a string, you can also do that with a table. If, if your function only takes in a single argument and it's a table, you can omit the parentheses. And so it leads to a nice little syntax like this. So we can say x is equal to x, y is equal to y. Um, we really want to ins assert that x is uh, not equal to nil, uh, or instead we could actually default these values. So 
one thing to keep in mind is if you have a default value or a default state and it's nil, um, you're not going to be able to initialize that field because we hardened that value. Uh, we, we, or we hardened the table and made sure that you can't add new values to your table. And if, if a key is nil, it, it, uh, it's, Lua basically treats it like it doesn't exist. To get around it, you can do raw set, right? You can use the raw set to get around the, uh, the meta method. Or what I like to do is actually use false instead of nil as a default uh, value. Um, I like doing that because um, it works with, uh, you know, when you do your if statements, if you want to check if something's falsy, uh, you can know that it's not been initialized. Um, it's, you, it, I find that it's a good value to have um, on, your, on your fields that are uninitialized that you want to just be at some default state other than nil. So yeah, let's, uh, so we have a player. Let's just make sure that this works. You can see um, x, y, maybe we give it an e. Uh, health, 100, right? And you can attach, you know, you can attach methods to this if you want. Uh, hurt maybe, or maybe let's do be nice and give it a heal function. Now I'm going to purposely make a mistake. Like this. Uh, and now if we, you know, if we try running it, um, whoops, you can see that it, uh, it actually tells us, hey, you know, you messed up. We don't know what health one is. And it'll give you the location in the file. So, uh, actually, where's the location? 84. So that, it is very nice. Um, unfortunately, you know, it only gets caught when you actually run the function. So, you know, it's, it's good to have a good test suite to catch all these things. But um, yeah, so the last thing I want to add is a nice function. I'm just going to call it is. Um, maybe you want to change the name, but I think it's, I, I, I like having is uh, as a name. Tag if type table it's not equal to table, then we're just going to check that. Uh, we're just going to return type of table is equal to tag. Otherwise, we're going to return get tag of the table is equal to tag. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I like to actually add this as a global variable and just use it everywhere. So w w let's say you create a function called um, update player. What you can do at the top of your function here, and let me just call this so that we get some nice syntax highlighting. Um, we can do assert is player player, like that. And that's really, I would just do this to all of your functions. There is a little bit of a performance cost to doing all these assertions and having type tags. But what I recommend is before you release, if performance is a concern for you, uh, go through, just do a text search and just remove your assertions. But it's very vital as you're working to have these uh, in every single place that there could be a variation in your program. Like if, if you have a behavior or if you have a thing that you expect, asserting on it at that place really helps make sure that your program is hardened and, and, and works, especially as you change things around. Um, you, can, you can do like live simulation testing where you simulate the game and then every single time something asserts uh, false, you know, you can catch that and create reports and you can kind of keep track of where your game is breaking, where you potentially have bugs. But yeah, so uh, if we run this, you know, everything's fine. If we name this test, we pass a test into something that expects a player, it's going to give us an error. So as you can imagine, you can take this and go wildly far with it. You can create functions that um, automatically check it, their arguments, and you can do a lot of crazy stuff. You can create collections uh, like tables that make sure every single value in the list is the, what you expect. So I'm going to leave that as an exercise for you. You can adopt this and make it as, uh, as useful as you need it. Um, but yeah, um, that's how you can add a little type safety to your Love2D programs. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys learned. And I'll see you in the next video.